in the name of my ancestors. <sighs> Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the gatekeeper of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Vimeo, Daily Motion, MySpace, and perhaps many other places, as the mighty, 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 mm, Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to send this message to my sister that she would like for us to call her Grandma Judy. I would like to send the message to our brother, Fearless 2005, and of course, the ever controversial brother we know of as Tommy Sotomayor. Why are we here, including myself? Some of us are here just to make an opinion. Some of us are here for entertainment, having fun, educational purpose, things of that nature. There are those who come to YouTube. There are those who come to social media looking for celebrity, looking for fame. And in all of these things, there is nothing wrong because of the internet. If you're looking for fame, looking for celebrity, looking for attention, the social media offers an outlet, whereas a talent agency, a record company, whatever you're seeking to uh, apply yourself in your search for celebrity and fame, they may not give you an opportunity and just ignore you. But when you use Facebook and YouTube and all these different venues of the internet, some people like Justin Bieber and many others, uh, this one uh, young guy, Fred, came from YouTube. He has a show on Disney Channel. So there are many reasons of why we come to social media. For me, I'm not looking for fame. I'm not looking for celebrity. The number one purpose of this ministry is to seek true freedom, justice, and equality for the descendants of slaves born in America. And the only way that the descendants of slaves born in America can attain these things is by self-thought. So it is not about you agreeing with what I say. I do not expect you to agree with what I present before us on this particular video lecture. It's not about you agreeing with me. It's about opening up another option so that we can think and see things outside of something that we have become loyal to so that we can have a choice instead of going to a citrus farm and the only thing you see is grapefruit when you should have lemons and limes and other citrus fruits available to you. I want you to think. But in this world that we have been born into, this society, this world, all over this planet, the powers that be don't like for us to think. They don't want us to think for ourselves. And you don't want to think for yourself. So you rely on your father or your mother or the TV or your pastor or the president. Let somebody else do your thinking for you. You refuse to think for yourself. So we die by the millions because of unjust 
wars. We die by the millions, drinking uh, beverages and eating poison food because the FDA said that's good for you. You don't think for yourself. You trust the FDA, your government, in hopes that they will do what is good for you when it is a proven fact. And many of us know this by now, that the government is only looking out to make a dollar and look out for those who bring it in dollars. These large corporations that poison your air, poison your water, poison the soil. And then you're, you're supposed to be an adult. And we allow this poison to be passed on to our children. And you wonder why the children are crazy and full of disease. I want you to open up your mind. That's what I'm about. I can relate to Grandma Judy. I can relate to Brother Fearless 2005. I can relate to Brother Tommy Sotomayor. We show our faces on video upon social media. The FBI, the local police, almost everybody knows who I am. So what sense does it make for me to try to hide? They already know how I think. They've known this probably since I was a little boy. They know what you about. You believe that you're not being tracked. I am not ashamed of who I am or what I am. So why should I not show my face upon the world? I'm not looking for celebrity. I'm not looking for fame. I just want you to think for yourself because see if you think for yourself then I know that sooner or later we'll get on the same page I don't have to convert nobody just cause you to use your brain and I hope that's the purpose of grandma Judy the purpose of fearless 2005 the purpose of brother Tommy Sotomayor use your brain think for yourself analyze Use common sense. Investigate. Research yourself. And stop being emotional. Stop having faith in people that don't give a care about you. They have an alternative motive. Trying to sell you a particular doctrine. Trying to make a slave out of you. I don't want you to be a slave to me or nobody else. I want to ask Grandma Judy, Brother Fearless 2005, and Brother Tommy Sotomayor, and myself. We make a serious mistake when we allow the faceless to influence what we say or do. Do you really believe that having all these subscribers and friends do you really do we really believe that they give a care about us it gives us a false impression a false sense of celebrity a false sense of fame because I learned myself that you can have thousands of subscribers thousands of viewers thousands of social media friends does not mean anything you still won't have a pot to piss in. You still won't have nothing and can't get these people to do nothing if you're here to uplift us as a people. They only view you and me and Judy and Fearless and Tommy as entertainment because that's all a childlike mind. That's all you can expect from people with childlike minds. Why do you think they hide their faces? The faceless trolls, they like for you to beef. They like Tommy cussing out Grandma Judy and Grandma Judy saying what she says because they don't like Tommy and fearless. 
decides to jump in and say what he has to say. They like all that. Instigate fighting. Not peacemaking. There's nobody out here that's a peacemaker. You don't see that in the comments. Don't get that old woman, Tommy. Go ahead, Grandma Judy. Jump on that Tommy. Go ahead, Fearless. Jump. Help Tommy jump on, on Grandma Judy. Yeah, beat that old woman up. They instigate trouble because this is entertainment for them. Their children, faceless, cowardly trolls, they hide their faces so they can't be judged. They don't mind judging what I say or what Tommy say or what, what Grandma Judy said, what Phyllis say. We show our faces and we give you a peek into our personal life. And they judge us, but they hide. Because they don't want to be judged. They could not handle the public scrutiny. They couldn't handle the pressure of speaking in the public. But they can judge what you say. You should be happy for anybody that's brave enough to come on YouTube, show their face, and voice that opinion, whether you agree or disagree. I have no real respect for those hiding behind a picture. What you trying to hide? What you, what you being secretive about? Most troublemakers are faceless. Very few faceless people are trying to be peacemakers. They don't go to Tommy and say, Tommy, maybe you need to chill out a little bit. Fearless, Brother Talik, you know, don't talk about Tommy like that. Fearless, don't talk about that old lady like that. Come on, maybe she just don't know. There's nobody like that. Go get them because this is entertainment for them. I'm not here to be your entertainer. I'm here to awaken the minds of the people so that we can move forward and create our own YouTube, create our own country, our own nation, our own language. Everything belongs to us. I'm not here to beef with nobody. I'm not here to bring down Tommy or Fearless or Grandma Judy or nobody. Anything that I say is what we call constructive criticism. There is no right or wrong. Giving us another option besides, yeah, kick that Negro in the backside. Kick that woman in her backside. Let's beat each other up. After 400 years living in slavery, don't you think that black folks, we should be tired of getting our butts kicked and then we turn around and beat ourselves up? The men beat the women. The women beat the men. Both men and women beat up on the children. Oh, look at them crazy kids. They came out of your body. They're your sperm. They're your ovum. You produce the children. They're crazy. You having babies by the men. Men having babies by the crazy women. Don't make any sense. You beating yourself up. You are a victim. You were born into this condition. You didn't set all this up. You was born in, into a society that was against you. A society that is not designed to bring out the best in us. You two full of troublemakers, faceless. They don't care. You keep thinking they care about you. These people don't care nothing about you. You could die tomorrow. They just say, oh, well, so-and-so is gone. He dead. And if they don't like you, good riddance to bad rubbish. Don't allow faceless trolls to make you think you something that you're not. Because if we really was the celebrity, if we really was famous, then perhaps the paparazzi will be outside our door trying to get pictures of us. Stalking us. We can't say nothing. can't do nothing. Somebody with a camera. Somebody with a tape recorder. And I want to remind us.
if we are looking for fame and fortune and celebrity, fame is a two-edged sword. You have to take the good with the bad. We like the good part. The paparazzi taking pictures and our our mug on uh, magazines and on TV and people always talking about us. Ask Beyonce about fame. This is the first time that Beyonce gotten into a little trouble with the media. She's been quiet since the lip singing scandal. If she can't handle the lip singing sinking scandal, what she's going to do when they find some real dirt on her? She do something real messed up. That's celebrity life. That's being famous. We lust for the good side. Just like some of us want to be black leaders. I'm a black leader. I, I want to run this. I want to tell Negroes what to do. The other side of black leadership is that if you're a troublemaker, the powers that be will throw you in jail. If you're a troublemaker, somebody will put a, put a bullet in your brain. You always have to look out somebody trying to kill you. Do you think that President Obama, do you really believe he's living the good life knowing that 24 hours a day somebody is out there plotting to try to kill him? But and is, is that is that worth it being president? That's part of being president, being leader. The leader is the first one that's going to get a bullet to the brain. Enjoy. I'm not here to be your leader. I'm here to cause you to think for yourself so that we can become leaders. Not leader. Leaders. You help me, I help you. We're in the same situation trying to survive. Now, then the bad side come of fame and celebrity, and we don't like it. Then you start crying like a baby. Oh, they talking about me. Why are they like this? And that's part of the sick game of fame and celebrity. Some people will hate what you do. Some people will like what you do. And everything that you do is under scrutiny. Everybody will judge your actions, your every move. But we should never allow faceless YouTube trolls. They hide, they are faceless for a reason. We should never allow them to influence who we are and give us a false sense that we somehow have made it to that fame and the fortune or whatever it is that you're seeking. I'm not seeking those things. I'm here to offer my opinion just to cause us to think there is no right, there is no wrong. Just look at, look at things from another point of view. Instead from the view of religion, from the view of some politics, or from what your mama told you, or what your dad told you, or what the drunk in the street told you when you was nine years old. Be here on YouTube because you love what you do and you believe in what you do. No more, no less. Now, I am not a lawyer for Grandma Judy. But like I said, I'm here to attempt to offer us another option for thought. Faceless trolls, like I said before, they are here for entertainment. They are instigators. So they're not interested in any option because peace is not entertaining. But a punch to the jaw, pow! A punch to the midsection, throw you over my back, that's entertainment. That's wrestling. So why don't you, Tommy Sotomayor, wrestle Miss Judy? Miss Judy, wrestle fearless. Why don't we snub up, get your hand in there. Wrestle. Entertain me. I'm going to entertain you all right. And while I'm entertaining you, I'm going to be whooping your backside with the real truth. So keep, keep watching. 
They don't care about nobody. These are the same people that talk about we care about the black community. How can you care about the black community? I'm part of the black community. Tommy Sotomayor is part of the black community. Grandma Judy is part of the black community. Fearless is part of the black community. How can you care about the black community and you have brothers and sisters fighting and beefing with one another and you stay silent? You instigate the foolishness. You instigate the madness. That's why they are faceless trolls. These people are not real. My brother, JT Riley, always say, there's only two people in this world, real and fake. And the reason why they hide behind a picture because they fake, they got you beefing among one another for their entertainment. I'll be dang if you're going to use me for that. You're here and I'm going to whoop your backside because you know that you're wrong for participating in that type of activity or having that type of mindset. You should be shamed that Tommy is cussing out an old lady. You should be shamed that Fearless 2005 is cussing out, disrespecting an old lady, and the old lady should not be making statements that will cause another person trouble like that. Sometimes we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. But one thing for sure, where's the peacemakers? Where they, where they at? Somebody has to be a voice of reason if you really care and love black folks, the descendants of slaves born in America. How can you be silent and watch brothers and sisters turn each other down? All these gender war channels, a whole channel dedicated to bashing black women. Oh, you love it. Whole channels dedicated to bashing black men and maybe children dedicated to making mockery of black folks. You allow this to happen because y'all feed all this madness. You're sick. You don't care about nobody. You get enjoyment out of your own destruction. You might as well slit your wrists. How foolish people you are. How can you bash black women? Hood rat. Beastie, whatever you want to call them. They belong to the black community without of whom there would be no black community because every last one of you came through the womb of a woman. Regardless to the mentality of the woman, you got here by a woman. And you should be seeking to help that woman, not make mockery, degrade, and bash the woman. It has not happened yet. Where you can talk about somebody like a dog and it helps them. Where are y'all getting this strategy from? Do you know the best way that you can help a so-called hood rat? Do you know the best way that you can help a so-called male sagging his pants or whatever? A uh, hood man? What what is the what is the term for men? It's not ghetto men or thugs, whatever. Do you know that love is the best solution to this problem? When people feel that they love, they are willing to make a change because they respect you. How can they respect you and me? Calling a black woman an ape and a monkey because she wears some wigs and put all this war paint on her face. And the brother, how are you going to get him to pull up his pants by calling him a monkey? That's not going to work. The only thing you're going to do is get anger. And that's exactly what we're, we have been getting. Resistance. But it's hard to fight somebody when they say they love you. You don't love nobody. You're self-righteous and think of yourself. You think that you're better than a hood rat. You think you're better than a thug. So you want to show them. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not a thug. I, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm not a hood rat. I, you're a Negro slave. You got you have dark skin and you're nothing but a 
big person in the mind. So what makes you any better than they are? You're not that much better than what they are. Because you believe you are a goody two-shoes? Because you haven't been to jail? You don't do no drugs? You got a college degree? You have ghetto women with college degrees. You have men that sag their pants with college degrees. It's the education, it's the society that you're living in, it's the mentality. You have people that do things because they want attention because they're not getting any love. You bringing more hate with your self-righteous, grandiose, know-it-all self and don't know nothing. I'm here to bring us option in our thinking. This is not entertainment for me. Making mockery of people, calling them ghetto and hood rats and thugs. That's not entertaining for me. That's children's stuff. Infantile name calling. You don't know what the cause is. You don't have no solution. You just think that it ain't me. So I'm, I'm better. But as you can see, you're not that better. And, and if you ever show your dang face, call me on the telephone. I don't even have to know you. And I'll show you within a few minutes that you ain't better. But you already know that. That's why many of these idiots don't mess with me. I know what you are. Don't even have to, don't even have to meet you in person. Now, this is a, we're going to talk a little bit here. <clears throat> if I look off, I have these notes. I want to try to keep this. I want to try to make this as uh, short as possible. But we want to talk. We want to talk. We want to talk to one another. Not out of dislike. Not out of disagreement. We talking, we want to talk to one another out of love. The troublemakers are not going to be interested. They want to know, what do you have to say about Tommy? What you got to say about Fearless 2005? What you got to say about Grandma Judy? Hurry up and get to that so I can find something in what you're saying so that we can put you in the beef. That's going to happen. But those who have sincere hearts that understand where I'm coming from, they're not going to fall for your vicious and evil trap beasts black demons don't tell me black folks can't be devils cause you see them every day troublemakers now there's something in the law that's called or I forgot exactly how it's called but it's the application of clean hands. If you make a claim in court that somebody did this or that and they owe you money or whatever, when you come into court, they expect you to have clean hands. And we're going to, I'm going to reference this back later on in our talk. Listen. If you go to court and you sue on another person because instead of cocaine, they gave you baking soda, the judge is going to dismiss your case because you came into the court with unclean hands. The court cannot help you do something as that is illegal. Buying and selling cocaine is illegal. Now it might be true that the drug dealer ripped you off because you were looking for cocaine and got baking soda, but the court cannot help you because buying and selling cocaine is illegal. You have to come to court with clean hands. If we are going to 
speak against another person. If Grandma Judy is making accusations against Tommy uh, Sotomayor, <laughs> Sotomayor, okay, or Fearless 2005 is making accusations against Grandma Judy, if I'm making accusations against all of them, <laughs> then we need to come into court with clean hands. How are you going to come into court and your hands is just as dirty as the people that you're talking about. That is another reason why so many people on social media, that's why they hide their faces. Because they are not coming into court with clean hands. And sometimes you think your hands is clean, but when you face a good prosecutor, when a person has to defend themselves, they'll let you know very quick, your hands ain't as clean as you think they are. So I want, I said this just to remind us and keep that up here, that when we're talking about somebody, let us come into court with clean hands. But in religion, they teach that there is nobody that has clean hands. Your righteousness is as rags in the sight of God. There is nobody without sin. Even in the Bible, the one called Jesus is not without sin. He has sin. So how can you be better than somebody else? How can you be greater? How can you be smarter when all of us suffer under sin? If it was not for us suffering under sin, according to religious teaching, there would be no need for Jesus, no need for uh, Muhammad, no need for God, period. You may able to do things on your own, but God sends prophets according to religious teaching. God sends Jesus. God sends Moses, Abraham, in order to bring the people a message, in order to give them another option of thinking to raise their mentality. That's what we're here to do. I hope that I can accomplish that. I don't want you to agree with me. I just want us to think a little differently. Let us try to come into court with clean hands. Let us push the hate aside. Let us push the bias aside. If you care about black folks, stop bringing us bias and hatred. Bring somebody love for a change. I know I'm ghetto. I know I'm a thug. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a gay. <laughs> I know whatever it is you think I am, we already know that. But if you want somebody to listen to you, you have a better chance to catch a bee with honey than vinegar. It's better to show somebody that you love them. All these videos showing bad behavior and all like that. What do you think that's accomplishing? That's not accomplishing nothing. We already know people behave like that. We already know how ghetto chicks behave. We already know how thugs behave. Do you know how you behave? You ain't no better. Because you just as hateful. You just as ignorant and illiterate as they are. You just do it in a different kind of way. You better. No, no. Not in this house. You're not going to get away with that. You want to judge somebody. They're in religious teaching, it also says, judge not, lest ye be judged. And some of y'all can't handle that. That's why you have behind a picture. Because you don't want to be judged. Come into the house with clean hands. I want you to be patient with me. This is going to take a little time. 
But this is a house based in love. This is a house based in caring. I don't want to make fun of Brother Fearless. I don't want to make fun or mockery of, of uh, my sister, Grandma Judy, or my, my most talented brother, radio broadcaster, Tommy Sotomayor. That ain't what I'm here for. I'm here to bring you what nobody else want to bring us. Love. Love the black man. Love the black woman. Why we keep hating on one another? Is it necessary because you don't agree with what somebody say? Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make it a better world if you can. We show love to everybody. We cry for everybody else. But we don't show love and we don't cry for ourselves. Where are you? Who and right? Come here. Give, give, me a, give me a hug. Brother, thug, give me your hand. Let me shake you. I'll hug you too, brother. We, it ain't no gay thing. Come on. That's the way we have to be with one another. People are hurting. People are in pain. That's why you're making these gender war videos. Because the man hurt. The children hurt. The women hurt. We as a people, we hurt. We taking it out on ourselves. We got to stop that. So don't jump on me because I'm bringing a video talking about Brother Tommy Sotomayor or, or Fearless 2005 or Grandma Judy. Because what I'm bringing is constructive criticism because I don't hate nobody. Not judge of nobody. I want to show us another option of thinking, trying to love us. Right or wrong. Other people do it. They support one another right or wrong. Why can't we do that for ourselves? I'm here to show us what we don't show ourselves. Caring and love. Bringing you some honey. Not charging you any money. It's free. Come into the house. With clean hands. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, when I was growing up. <clears throat> give me a second. Let me straighten this camera out just a little bit. Okay, and while I'm taking this little break, let me get a let me get a drink. <clears throat> ah, okay. Y'all ready? Are you patient with me? Am, am I boring you? Because see, when you love somebody and trying to show people love and caring, it can get boring. The faceless troll looking for entertainment. When you gonna get this? When are you going to send something so I can use it and, and get this beef going? You can still take a message of peace and try to make beef out of it if you want. But why are you searching? Why are you looking, you black devil? I'm whooping you in your backside with real truth. And you're not going to get away with it because those with sincere hearts See, if the heart is not sincere, it makes no difference anyway. But those who have sincere hearts, they are feeding off the message because the message is what they want. They want to love black people. They want to love the black community. They want our situation to change for the better. And so they are listening. And they can handle this long video lecture because they want to understand the second option. What we're doing wrong. What we can do better. Is there, what is the cause? What is the solution? Help us. Because I'm offering not beef, but honey. And I'm putting that honey in a bowl and offering it to you with clean hands. I'm telling you this because I love us. It's coming from the heart. Because if it was not, I wouldn't waste my time. We are already at 30 some minutes. Still have a little way to go. I want to talk to us. Not only 
sister, uh, grandma, and fearless, and brother Sotomayor, I'm, and I want to talk to me too. Talking to us who really want to change this situation. And we can do that if we really want to. When I was a younger person, excuse me again. When I was a younger person, you never, and it was something that was understood. We did not disrespect our elder persons for no reason. You did not disrespect your elders if they was a big shot pastor in a mega church and you did not disrespect your elder if he was a drunk laying in the street out of his mind. That's something as a child that was understood by those in my community, I don't know what they did in New York. I don't know what they did in L.A. I don't know what they do in Chicago. But in Eagle Park, Anchors, Illinois, we respected our elders no matter where they were in life as young people. But somewhere, the communities we've become worsen. We have lost respect for our elders, and we have lost respect for our women. We lost respect for our men. We respect for our babies. The black, the so-called black community actually the black neighborhood because if we was a community we would be in commune but we're not in commune with one another we just live in neighborhoods that's my neighbor and most times you don't even like your neighbor but we've lost respect for anybody but we will give respect to the racist Caucasian pink people because they'll take out a gun and blow your brains out they'll fire you from their job they won't let you be the first congressperson, the first black on the moon. See, they have power, so you're going to respect them because they have power. But when you're dealing with somebody who you believe is nothing like you, then you don't have no respect. So I'm going to talk to Grandma Judy any kind of way I want to because I view her as nothing. She's a Negro. She's nothing. And I can do that because really, I don't view myself as nothing. When Grandma Judy looks like your grandmother, your great aunt, your mother. So how can you disrespect somebody that looks like somebody that's in your family? Because she said something you didn't like. Or maybe she said something that you misunderstood or you blew it out of proportion. However, but this is how you talk to her. Young people are stupid. See myself, I'm what you call middle age. I'm middle aged person. I think after 55, you become a senior citizen or whatever. I'm still a middle aged person. But when you are a young person, young people think they will never get old. They will never be 70 years old. They will never be an elder. I remember when I was younger, and I would always say, oh, that old man said this, and that old man said that, that old man did this. And now, younger people are telling me, Angel Snuffin' Up 7, that old crazy man, that Angel Snuffin' Up 7, that old geezer, what's up, OG? As long as you live, you get older. You don't get younger. And 
And as you get older, there should be some type of maturity that comes with you. It does not happen to all of us. And there are some immature, older people. There's no doubt about that. But just by living life should give us some sort of respect because we are already at where you want to try to be. In Chicago, do you know how many young people that lost their lives was not even 25 years old? Grandma Judy has lived long enough for two or three lifetimes of some of the young people that have been murdered in Chicago alone. At least to say all over this country. How are you going to disrespect her because you don't like what she said? There's a certain amount of respect that you give your elders regardless where they are in life. If they are the president or they are drunk living in the mud, give them their respect. See, but we don't have no respect, but we expect to be respected. Do you know why you're in the condition you're in? Because you don't respect nobody. You don't even respect yourself. Because one day, you might. See, that's not guaranteed. Grandma Judy knows she's 70 years old. You might be able to see what she has seen. And Grandma Judy seems to have her health. But many young people in their 20s, even younger, younger people suffer from diabetes. Di diabetes 1, diabetes 2, obese. Young people having heart attacks already. Young people filled up with all types of venereal diseases. All oh, y'all got gotten so nasty. You a child, 12, 13 years old, and you got gonorrhea if you don't have AIDS. Then you turn around and we want to talk about Grandma Judy. You don't have to like what Grandma Judy has to say. It's a matter of respect. But see, you don't get respect because you don't give respect to others. Think about that. This is another option of thinking. Now, I just want to talk about what she said on her video. Now, Grandma Judy she was not profane. She was not vile. She was not nasty hearted. From what I see in the video, she has a, the right to her opinion. Just like I have the right to my opinion. You believe that you have the right to your opinion. But see, now you believe you have the right to your opinion, but you want to censor other people because they talk about you. What you don't like. Well, she said this. Let's talk about what she said. Well, first of all, there was no profanity. There was no childish name calling because Grandma Judy comes from a place where, you know, we, you grow up and you become mature. There's a certain amount of maturity. Maybe as we get older, we lose some of our brain cells. We, be, we become a little senile. We don't think as fast as we used to. But she comes from a place void of profanity, filthy, nasty, cussing mouth. Because she's making her opinion in a respectful manner. You might not like what's being said, but that's where it's coming from. Now, what has really gotten people upset is that she suggests that the Division of Family Services investigate Tommy Sotomayor. Now, I could see why this would be upsetting because nobody wants somebody to call the police 
or the division of family services on them. Nobody. I, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I can't justify. I'm not going to say that. But we don't know. We don't know the heart, where this is really coming from. Is this lady really concerned with the child or is she doing it out of malice? See, we really, we really don't know. But from her tone, maybe she's not doing it out of, out of malice. In any way, if somebody told me, I'm going to call Division of Family Services on you, I'm going to call the police on you. Don't you know, just because I made a YouTube video, there were people that said, I'm going to call the FBI and the local police and investigate you for hate speech or whatever. See, that's real threat. They trying to cause me harm. And they do it in a manner so I know they want to try to cause me harm. But things like that, I mean, I just listen to it and keep rolling because the FBI, I already know, I haven't said or done anything that warrant the FBI because of a video to do anything to me or the local police. So some things we need to just, you know, look over. I understand the serious nature of it, but now, how long ago was this suggested? How long ago was this video made? We should call the DFS on top. Has the Division of Family Services visited you, Brother Tommy Sotomayor? And they chances are they wouldn't, they don't care nothing about stuff on YouTube. I mean, come on. Somebody really has to get on the ball, make some telephone calls, and whatever to try to make a case. And I doubt if the, if the Division of Family Services, based on the video that I saw, would do anything. And you know that too. I'm pretty sure you know that too. But see, we like beefing. We, we like causing trouble. We, we like those things. A lot of us do. We like to be in the drama. We want to talk about black women and they are drama queens. And black men have become just as much drama queens as these black women. We always want to beef with somebody. Keep some stuff going on. You ain't no better than the beastie. Except you just use a camera and put it on YouTube. You get in somebody's face just like that chick that, that just got tasered by a security guard. But you just do it on video. And if somebody could taser you, you be tasered. Come on now. Come into court. With clean hands. Grandma Judy did not attack this baby. She only mentioned that the child was laying in the bed. She did not say nothing about that child, period. She attacked my child. Come on now. Let us not tell a lie when it's very clear we see the video. She said, there's a baby laying in the bed with the father. Making a video or whatever. She just let, the, let us know that the child was there. Didn't say nothing about the child. Didn't call the child a whore. Didn't call the child a hood rat or nothing. So how is the child being attacked? What was attacked was your actions because really there is no need to put your child in a video. You know this is the public arena and you know how you talk. So anything that we do, you know these people or going to use it against us. Somebody might make a video talking about because I, I wear a red shirt and a Texas tie. Expect to be attacked when you come into the public arena. And then, Grandma Judy being 70 years old, she probably really don't know the, know the technology. If you was making that video, she don't understand that even though those images of the woman in the G-string, whatever it is, popped up. That child can't see that uh, those images when you're putting that video together. This is not to say that the child didn't see the video later on behind after the camera turns off and maybe you've shown that to the child. We don't know. 
But I think that it, it that it is an overreaction because you can tell by how Grandma Judy, how she spoke, how she's carrying herself, it's really no intent to try to really harm you. I don't view I could be in error, but I really don't see that. Sometimes we become over emotional over things, and sometimes we are just troublemakers ourselves because we want to beef with somebody. And we want to make up stuff that really ain't there. And that's what she done. You're not going to do nothing. I don't think that you're going to do anything to your daughter. We make up things that we need to stop doing stuff like that. But this woman, I'm going to give her a break because she's 70 years old. Her perception of things might be off. We don't know. But one thing for sure, you haven't made a video where you're telling your audience that the, that the Division of Family Services came out to investigate you. That I mean, come on, we already know. I already know that wasn't going to happen, not based on this video. And then, if you did not do what you've done, by putting the child in the video late at night in a hotel room with these images, then you put that out there, you set yourself up. Just like Michael Jackson confessed that he slept with little boys. Nobody made Michael Jackson say that. Nobody put the nobody made Michael Jackson put little boys in his bed. That's something that Michael did, and he suffered the consequences because later on he went to uh, trial being accused of pedophilia. He set himself up. He did it twice. 1993, Michael Jackson was charged with the same stuff. Then he turned right around. I'm Michael Jackson. They can't do nothing to me. So he kept that same old behavior knowing you are a public figure. You can't do the same thing other people do when you become on YouTube when you put yourself on video. You become famous. You set yourself up. That's part of fame and fortune. If you don't like that, then you're in the wrong business. We should keep our children, our mothers and fathers, or whoever out of this business. Then there would be no problem, right? So we need to help so we need to accept responsibility also. We need to come into court with clean hands. Right? You don't have to agree with me. But that's the real truth of the matter. We have to accept responsibility also. We also need to stop over-exaggeration over of things and uh, looking into things more than what they really are. I really don't see that this woman is really trying to cause you harm. Not from her demeanor, even from her speech. Because there are those who have made videos, you know exactly where they're coming from. Exactly.